Let us move to the uh, next presentation uh, to be done by uh, Mr. Lim Chi and the topic is evaluating the potential of empty fruit punch mixtures as cocopeat replacement in fertigation system. Please, Mr. Lim, the floor is yours. So I have the... Uh -huh. Yes, Sorry? yes. Yes, I am. You. Okay, so uh, they have closed permissions and I have the presentation recorded. So I will share my screen and play right now. And, and Please go ahead. Uh, and Dr. Lemmy it is, is with us after the as, after the, his record uh, presentation. He is available to, to answer for any question. Thank right. you. Can everyone see uh, the screen? Clearly? Perfect. Yes. Perfect. All right. Let me know if there are problems with the volume. Let's begin. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Chai Ying from Curtin University, Malaysia. Today I would like to share with you a research work done by my student Zi Yang on evaluating the potential of empty fruit bunches mixture as cocoa peat replacement in fertigation system. This is the outline of my presentation. I will go through with you the background of the research and what motivates it and the research gap that is identified through the literature review the objective of the research, the methodology, results and recommendation and conclusion. Picture on the slide shows the object of our study, which are empty fruit bunches or EFB. EFB is a major agricultural waste of palm oil industry produced after the fruits has been removed from the fresh fruit bunches in the sterilization process at the palm oil mill. As the second largest palm oil producer in the world, in Malaysia, we could produce up to 15 million tons of EFB annually. The handling of EFB waste is challenging because of its enormous amount. Landfill of EFB waste could lead to biodegradation and the emission of strong greenhouse gases like methane. Traditionally, the EFB waste has been incinerated at the incinerator at the mill uh, however, the incineration process will also lead to the emission of greenhouse gas. Therefore, in Malaysia, most of the mill has stopped the practice of incinerating EFB waste. Instead, the EFB waste is used as mulching um, at the palm oil plantation as a biofuel pellet or process it as fiber for other manufacturing process. This is the EFB long fiber that are produced as byproduct in the palm oil mill. EFB waste that has gone through the steam sterilization process at the mill will be further shredded by crushing and cutting process and later dry and packed into fiber bundle that looks like the picture. Uh, and that could be used as a raw material in furniture, paper and mattress manufacturing plant. This EFB long fiber costs about Ringgit Malaysia 250 metric tons, which comes to about 50 USD. This EFB fibers looks really similar to cocoa peat, which are fiber extracted from coconut husk that are commonly used as planting medium in fertigation system. Fertigation system is a soilless planting techniques that is used in modern agriculture. The term fertigation uh, originated from fertilizer and irrigations, where fertilizer are uh, put into the irrigation system and a controlled amount of fertilizers are supplied to the plant according to its needs. Fertigation system has the advantage of control diseases that are soil related, and it could offer higher yield because we can control the amount of fertilizers uh, received by the crops. Due to its excellent physical, chemicals, and biological property, cocoa peats is one of the most popular planting medium used in fertigation system. It is commonly uh, in Malaysia. Uh, cocoa peat is commonly imported from India and Sri Lanka because we do not produce enough locally. The cocoa peat materials that are available in the market typically cost about ringgit Malaysia, 3,000 ringgit per metric ton. Consider the similarity in physical appearance of EFB fiber and cocoa peat. The locally availability 
as well as the cost difference between these two items. It is curious that whether or not EFB fiber could be used as a replacement for cocoa pit in fertigation system. Going through the literature, we found that some studies have been done in the past to consider empty fruit branches waste uh, to be used uh, as a planting medium in soilless planting. As listed in the table, empty fruit branches has been considered as a medium um, to be compared against uh, other planting mediums such as cocoa peat and uh, rubber tree sawdust um, to be used in fertigation system and other soilless planting techniques for uh, planting chilies, um, cauliflower, as well as mushrooms. Findings from the literature review shows that EFB could be further processed and manufactured into fiber block that is convenient to be transported and that, that makes it feasible to be sold in the market as a product. Past literature has considered raw EFB or processed EFB fiber as a potential medium in soilless planting. However, the experimental results for various types of crops shows that EFB could not offer competitive yield as compared to cocoa peat. Partial replacement or mix of processed EFB fiber with other planting medium could possibly offer a comparable yield. So far, very limited work has been done in comparing the properties of processed EFB fiber and cocoa peat, and no study has been found in analyzing the mixture of processed EFB fiber and cocoa peat for partial cocoa peat replacement. And therefore, the objective of our study is to evaluate the potential of processed EFB fiber as partial cocoa peat replacement in fertigation by comparing the physical and chemical properties of the mixture against those of cocoa peat, which is referred to as the datum of the experiment. The pictures below shows the EFB fiber obtained from a local palm oil mill and the cocoa peat that are used in this study. Next, we'll go through the methodology. Firstly, the physical and chemical properties and the techniques to measure them were identified through literature review. After that, the EFB fiber obtained from the local palm oil mill was prepared accordingly to mimic the manufacturing process of the cocoa pit. Experiments were then carried out to measure the properties of 100% cocoa pit, 100% treated EFB fiber, and um, measure the properties of other alternative planting mediums. Experiments were later designed to measure the physical and chemical properties of the cocoa pit EFB fiber and alternative uh, planting medium mixture in different combinations. Data obtained was later analyzed and verified in the study. There are six properties identified to be measured in the study, which are about density, total porosity, aeration porosity, water holding capacity, pH, and electric conductivity. The flowchart on the right hand side shows the processes applied in the experiment. Firstly, uh, the planting medium were mixed according to the design ratio and filled in a beaker of 100 ml. The mass of the mixture were then measured using an electronic scale and with the um, volume and the mass, we can calculate the bulk density. In the same beaker, distilled water was filled in to measure the volume needed for the material to reach saturation. Knowing the volume of the mixture and the volume of the water to be filled in, we could then calculate the total porosity. The mixture was then filtered by using filter paper for two hours until the water is completely drained. The liquid drained from the mixture was then measured um, to confirm its volume. With this data, we can then calculate the aeration porosity uh, as the volume of the water drained over the total media volume. The pH and EC level of the filtered solution uh, was then measured by using pH prop as well as conductivity meter. 
With the information that we have about total porosity and aeration porosity, the water holding capacity of the mixture could then be calculated. The EFB fiber used in these studies are EFB long fiber that has been produced as secondary product in a local pump oil mill. This long fiber has gone through the steam sterilization process, separation process, crushing and cutting process to shred it, and also drying process to remove the excess moisture, which are quite similar to the manufacturing process of cocoa pit. For this experiment, the EFB fiber has been further treated. The long fiber has been cut into final size using a grinder to make its particle size even smaller and look similar to the cocoa pit under study. With this treated EFB fiber, we mix it with cocoa pit and another alternative planting medium in different ratio uh, to test for its chemical and physical properties. The experiments were designed for cocoa peat treated EFB fiber mixture in a ratio of 80-20, And for cocoa peat treated EFB fiber and alternative planting medium, uh, the experiments were carried out for the mixture in the uh, in 25 different ratios. Two samples were tested for each set and the average values are, were taken as the results. So let's have a look at the results. Before the properties of the mixtures were measured, the properties of cocoa peat uh, treated EFB fiber and other planting mediums in the original form were tested and compared. It can be seen from the results that compared to cocoa peat, uh, the EFB fiber has higher value in terms of bulk density. The value of total porosity and pH uh, were quite similar. However, uh, the aeration porosity of the treated EFB fiber was only half of that of uh, cocoa peat. Meanwhile, the treated EFB fiber have a much higher value in terms of water holding capacity. The EC value of the treated EFB fiber was also much higher compared to that of cocoa peat. Maybe this is because uh, the cocoa peat in the market has gone through the long duration of washing process and the uh, steam sterilization process of the EFB is insufficient to remove the excess mineral in it. Some other planting mediums such as perlite, sawdust, uh, peat moss, and also rice husk were measured to compare its properties and identify the suitable third alternative planting medium um, to be considered in the mixture. Peat moss was selected as the third component in the mixture, considered its moderate property uh, that could be used to regulate um, the physical and chemical properties of uh, cocoa peat and EFB fiber mixture. The table on top of this slide shows the six different combinations of the cocoa peat treated EFB fiber mixtures measured in the experiment. Plotting the graph of the properties against the composition of EFB in the mixture, it shows that the bulk density of the mixture eventually increased uh, as the EFB fiber content in the mixture increases. The total porosity of the mixture, however, is um, relatively consistent uh, and unaffected by the composition of the EFB fiber. The aeration porosity decreases with the increment of EFB fiber composition in the mixture. Uh, some of the inconsistency in the data would later be explained in the discussion session. Water holding capacity, on the other hand, increases with the increment of EFB fiber in the mixture. The test result also shows that the composition of EFB fiber has rather minor effect um, to the pH value, uh, where the pH value um, increased within the range of 0.25 pH uh, as the EFB composition increases. The EC value, however, uh, increased significantly uh, as the EFB composition increases in the mixture. Similar experiments were also carried out to measure the properties of cocoa peat treated EFB fiber, peat moss mixtures uh, in different combinations. 
The composition of peat moss as the third uh, planting medium in the mixture will increase gradually uh, in 10%, 30%, 50%, 70%, and 90% steps. Altogether, there were 25 combinations uh, of the mixture that has been tested. Uh, and each of these combinations, we have two samples and the results were calculated from the mean value of two samples. The result shows that the cocoa peat treated EFP fiber mixture, as well as cocoa peat treated EFP fiber peat moss mixtures could not demonstrate the exact same property as that of cocoa peat. However, the properties of the mixtures in certain composition are quite close and that partial replacement of cocoa peat could be considered. The combination of 80% cocoa peat, 20% EFB fiber, and 80% cocoa peat, 10% EFB fiber, plus 10% peat moss are found to be the closest combination to that of the datum, uh, which is cocoa peat. The difference of these mixtures in terms of its physical and chemical properties are very small, uh, which are within the range of 2% to 8%. Uh, and therefore, uh, we could possibly consider its potential uh, as a replacement of cocoa peat in, in fertigation uh, planting. Due to time constraint, only two samples were tested for each combination in this study. It is suggested that uh, the number of samples in the experiment to be increased uh, to reduce the errors due to the variation in natural materials used uh, in the experiment. It is also suggested that the scale of materials tested to be increased uh, from 100 ml to 500 or 1000 ml to reduce sensitivity of the sample. It is also suggested that the EFB fiber used in the experiment to be further processed uh, exactly in the same way as the manufacturing process of the cocoa pit to reduce the initial disparity between the two materials. Besides physical and chemical properties, the biological properties of the planting medium could also be compared. It is also suggested that uh, the actual planting experiment to be carried out using different composition of cocoa peat EFP fiber mixture to observe the actual impact to the crops. In conclusion, the objective of the research project was achieved. We found that the EFP fiber has potential to replace cocoa peat partially as soilless planting medium, considering the similarity in its uh, physical and chemical properties uh, when it is used as a mixture. Further studies on biological properties and actual planting experiment uh, needs to be carried out for further verification. With that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, you may write to me uh, through this email. Thank you.